This last year has been super exciting, if not a little bit vexing at times for video gamers. Suddenly TVs are looking like much better and bigger options to gaming monitors for both console gamers and to an extent PC gamers as well. The challenge now is which TV should gamers buy? Welcome back everyone, I'm Caleb Dennison and I am excited to share with you my picks for the best gaming TVs that came out in 2021. Let me be clear, this is not a debate on console versus PC, I am not going there, at least not in this video. But I do wanna talk about the TVs that unlock the latest gaming features, as well as TVs that are great for gaming, even if they don't sport all the bells and whistles. Are you ready for this? Before I rip open a bag of Doritos and crack open a do with you, my YouTube friends, I wanna say, Thanks for watching, and I really mean that. If you like this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. And while you're down there smashing icons, that subscribe button could be your ticket to winning a big giveaway at 1 million subs. So, you know, think about that for a second. And finally, if you wanna have a chat about gaming TVs and which one you think is best, tell me about it in the comments and I'll be sure to jump in there with you so we can have some fun together. Now, before I start up the list, I wanna address the question, what makes a great gaming TV? Well, I think that depends on who you ask, and since you're here, I feel like it's a safe bet that you're basically asking me. But I also reached out to our gaming editor, Giovanni Colantonio, to get his take, and it turns out we agree that refresh rate and low input lag are toward the top of the list, with resolution and variable refresh rate running very closely behind. But also, picture quality, right? I mean, I think the better a game looks, the more you get sucked in and forget you're looking at a TV. So along those lines, I want to exclude any TV that might do something to pull you out of that immersion, right? That's the 101 on my criteria. And with that, let's look at my first pick. I'll start with Sony because A, it's complicated, and B, Sony makes the PlayStation, which leads us right back to point A, it's complicated. Why is it complicated? Well, one might think that because Sony makes the PlayStation that the company of the same name would also make a TV that maximizes the PlayStation's potential. Seems reasonable, right? But what I think most folks don't know is that Sony PlayStation is a very different entity than Sony TV. It's a corporate thing. Anyway, Sony is not out to make the most cutting edge gaming TV, at least not this year. But that does not mean that Sony's TVs aren't excellent for playing games. It just means Sony is out to make great TVs, period. Let's take a look at the Sony X90J, which I think is a great TV for most gaming applications. Why? Because in its game mode, it offers input lag low enough for all but the most competitive multiplayer games. It offers 4K resolution at 120 hertz with HDR, which is important because 120 hertz is considered pretty much essential now. And it offers great picture quality for games and all the non-gaming stuff you will watch on a TV. It does not support Dolby Vision gaming and it doesn't support variable refresh rate. So if those are must have features for you, then another TV on this list might be a better choice. But let's remember that for a lot of folks, a TV needs to be a great TV in general, as well as being a good option for gaming. And the X90J is certainly that. If you want a great TV that is also a solid gaming choice, then the X90J is a fantastic option. And yes, it does offer some perks for those who are gaming on a PS5 because it is a Sony. Now, if you want to spend a little less, you can also look at the X85J. It's lighter on features, but still a great TV to mate with your PlayStation. Next up, I wanna talk about TCL. Now, this also gets a little bit complicated because as I'm recording this, there's some concern over how TCL's Google TVs perform in general. I've noted that they can be a bit buggy and sluggish at times. Now, TCL tells me it's working on sorting out that issue, so there's a good chance that within weeks or even days, those concerns will be mitigated. So, keeping that in mind, here's where TCL is at for gaming. Both versions of the TCL 6 Series TV, Roku and Google, are awesome for gaming. There are a few details we should go into though. 
The TCL 6 Series Google TVs offer 4K 120Hz gaming. The Roku TV versions do not. The Roku versions will do 120Hz gaming, but at 1440p resolution, or 4K gaming at 60Hz. Now, in speaking with Giovanni, and I agree with this, refresh rate trumps resolution in most cases. I think 1440p at 120Hz is gonna be better than 4K at 60Hz. Now, outside of that, variable refresh rate is supported, as is HDR, and the input lag for for these TVs is quite low. I should also point out that the 6 Series TVs have THX certified game mode, which is really a way of saying that THX approves of the image quality of the games in the game mode. THX has standards and TCL 6 Series meets them. Again, the image quality for the money spent is going to be outstanding no matter which version of the 6 Series you get. Now let's talk about Samsung. Honestly, Samsung has a bunch of different models that would be great for gaming, but I want to hone in on its Neo QLED models because those are the most advanced TVs supporting HDMI 2.1 features. If you know me, then you know I have to bring in the Samsung QN90A as my top pick for gaming because it is, I think, the best deal in Samsung TVs right now. It offers tremendous performance in HDR, 4K 120Hz support, variable refresh rate, and ultra low input lag. It does not support Dolby Vision, period, be it for gaming or Netflix or Blu-rays. Also, it only offers two HDMI 2.1 ports per set, which can be limiting because one of those HDMI 2.1 ports is also the eARC or ARC port and might be taken up by a soundbar. So keep that in mind. If you want to rock both the PS5 and the Xbox Series X connected directly to the TV, then you will have to give up on having a soundbar connected via HDMI. You can still connect a soundbar via optical though, or you can just make do with switching between consoles at the HDMI cable level rather than in the TV. However you do it, the QN90A is a tremendously bright and beautiful beautiful TV and makes games look incredible. In terms of picture brightness and HDR, it's the most powerful TV on this list, no doubt about it. I'm about to get to the best gaming TV you can buy in a moment, but before I do, let's talk about Hisense. Where do its TVs sit in this gaming conversation? Well, both the U7G and U8G are amazing values in TV. In fact, in my best TVs of 2021 video, link right there, I call the Hisense U7G the best 65 inch TV you can buy under $1,000. It's got killer brightness and black levels, period, let alone at the price. It's got super low input lag, it supports Dolby Vision, HDR and HDR10+, and it has a 120 hertz panel. Now, to clarify, this TV doesn't support most HDMI 2.1 related gaming features like gaming at 4K 120 or variable refresh rate. However, because it has a 120 hertz panel, gaming at 60 hertz is going to be much smoother than a TV with a 60 hertz native panel. Just want to draw that distinction there. The TV has a 120 hertz panel, but it won't replicate frame per frame 120 frames each second coming from your console. It just doesn't have that bandwidth. However, I think for most casual gamers, the U7G is just a slam dunk. It's so good for the price. Next, let's talk about the best gaming TV in 2021, and that honor goes to the LG C1 OLED. Wait, what? Caleb's top gaming TV pick is an OLED? Yes, yes it is. You're darn right it is, because on the whole, OLED TVs are amazing for gaming. Not without a few quirks, but to be sure, the pros far outweigh the cons. Before I run down the long list of reasons why the LG C1 is the best gaming TV you can buy right now, let me address burn-in concerns. The fact is, for most folks, burn-in, even for gaming, is not going to be an issue. If you play the same game all day, every day, for months on end, and that game happens to have static elements like a head-up display that's always present, then perhaps don't get an OLED TV for gaming. Outside of that slim margin of use cases though, the LG C1 OLED pretty much slays every other TV on the market for gaming. Why? Because it can do everything. It's got four HDMI 2.1 ports, so both next-gen consoles and a gaming PC and Adobe Atmos soundbar can be connected all at once. It supports 4K 120Hz gaming, all the different versions of HDR, including Dolby Vision, which is my personal favorite. Also, for now, certain LG TVs are the only ones that support both AMD FreeSync Premium and G-Sync. In fact, LG has a pretty tight relationship with NVIDIA, and they made the C1 OLED ideal for G-Sync gaming. 
Plus, LG's gaming dashboard gives you next level control of all kinds of picture elements on the fly. So you don't have to go digging into the settings menu every time you wanna change something. The C1 even has picture presets optimized for different game types like RPGs, first person shooters, and so on. Plus the picture quality can't be touched. The perfect black levels make for amazing contrast and the color is just so spot on. Now, it's true that OLED TVs sometimes struggle with ultra low luminance stuff. So you may find yourself having to decide between elevated blacks for more shadow detail or crushed shadow detail for the absolute richest picture you have ever seen. But I'll take that choice any day. Also, for those of you hip to the fact that there can be some OLED flicker at really low frame rates, that's a thing, but how often are you gonna run into that? Based on what I'm hearing from owners, it's not often and definitely not a deal breaker. So, is the LG C1 the perfect gaming TV? No, but it's still the best one by a country mile. Oh, and added bonus points for the G1 series, which can get a touch brighter and also has a super slick look when mounted on the wall. It's just more expensive, and that's why the C1 wins the top spot in 2021. Thanks as always for watching everyone. What do you think of the list? Let me know down in the comments. Please consider clicking like and subscribe and here's two other videos I think you'll like.